An earthquake represents a moment when a weakness on the earth that we call a fault, it represents the moment when that fault fails catastrophically. And when it fails catastrophically, the fault moves, that is it ruptures or slips very, very quickly. When that occurs, it radiates energy in the form of seismic waves, and these waves propagate away from the fault, and these waves are responsible for most of the damage that occurs as a result of an earthquake. Earthquakes are very common, more common than people usually think of. So uh, we have to, we should probably start by thinking about how large these are. Magnitude scale basically measures the earthquake size, pretty much based upon the amount of energy the earthquake releases. And if you go up a scale, there is a difference in 30 times energy. The most damaging earthquakes in U.S. history in terms of amount of money that went into it was the 1994 Northridge earthquake that happened very close to Los Angeles. That earthquake had magnitude of 6.7. And if we look worldwide, think about how many magnitude 6s there are per week, let's say, there are actually two to three magnitude 6 earthquakes every week. So it, they are not that uncommon. It's just that most of them happen far away from human civilization and that they don't cause any damage. The deadliest earthquake in recorded history is the 2010 Haiti earthquake, and that was magnitude 7.0. And we do have actually a good number of magnitude 7s. So we do have two to three magnitude 7s per month. Unfortunately, nature teaches us lessons in the context of earthquakes. Uh, although we generally know where earth large earthquakes are going to occur, they occur at plate boundaries, when we focus in with our microscope at these plate boundaries, we realize that there's not a single boundary. There may often be 100 or 200 faults that actually accommodate the relative motion between the tectonic plates. And so the real challenge in terms of forecasting where earthquakes are going to occur in the future, how large they're going to be, is that we're dealing with a system of faults. We don't know on what fault the next earthquake will be. Along the Sumatran boundary, this stretch of deep ocean, we have had giant earthquakes in the last 10 years or so, starting with 2004 Sumatran earthquake, and we've more or less covered most of the plate boundary, except one region close to Padang, where we haven't had an, uh, giant earthquakes for over 200 years, and that is likely to generate a large tsunami. And we've seen quite a bit of damage done by tsunamis in 2004 around the Indian Ocean and from the 2011 Japan earthquake. And tsunamis travel long distances, generating potentially more damage than just from the ground motion.